Welcome to hour number two, the morning after live on this Monday to begin a new week right here on Sports Grid, Sirius XM channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM all across the Spiz Grizz Network. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. It's the final week of the WNBA regular season. The postseason push is certainly on in the W. So let's recap a big, big weekend in that league where all four of the top teams in the standings and on the odds board face off yesterday on a Sunday afternoon. And we begin with the reigning WNBA champions and the top team in the league right now, the Chicago Sky. A big weekend for the Sky, taking a game on Friday against the Washington Mystics and following that up with a great win yesterday at home against the Connecticut Sun. 94-91, the final in favor of Chicago at home in a great back-and-forth tilt. All five starters for the Sky scored in double figures, led by Courtney Vandersloot, a game-high 20 points. But the wily old veteran, Candace Parker, a double-double and a huge performance on that box score yesterday. 18 points for Candace, added in 12 rebounds as well. So two very big wins for Chicago. Again, beating Connecticut and Washington this weekend. Those are two of the top five teams in the league. So because of that, this two-game win streak has meant Chicago has a 25-8 and straight-up overall record this year, and they have a two-game lead for that top spot in the W. This guy have won four of their last five games and 10 of their last 12. So Chicago sitting in a good position entering this final week of the regular season to occupy that top spot in the WNBA playoffs on their hunt for a second consecutive WNBA championship. The team that sits in second currently also with the second best odds to win a WNBA title. The Las Vegas Aces playing the spoiler role yesterday in the final Regular season home game in Seattle for Sue Bird, capping off a historic and legendary career. Tributes across the board yesterday for Sue Bird, but the Aces, again, playing spoiler, getting a big road win, 89-81 over the Storm and Sue Bird. A sold-out crowd for that regular season finale in Sue Bird's career, the largest in the history of the Seattle Storm franchise. And Sue Bird ends with 9.6 dimes and four boards as well. Brianna Stewart had 35 and 10, but still the Aces come away with that road victory, pulling away late. Asia Wilson, one of the best players, of course, in the entire league, a team high 29 points. Kelsey Plum, the sharpshooter, 16, including a big triple in the final couple of minutes of that 89-81 victory for the Aces on the road. So Las Vegas in that second spot, again, two games behind the Chicago Sky at this moment. Seattle slightly stumbling, if you want to call it that, during this home stretch of the WNBA season. They're 20-13 and 13 straight up. They sit in fourth in the WNBA standings. They have split their last six games. They have lost five of their last eight. But as we look at those WNBA standings right now and the odds board, they almost match to a T. Again, if you remember last week, we showed you the updated WNBA championship odds where despite the fact Chicago had a game, game and a half advantage over the Aces, it was Las Vegas still booked as the slight, and I mean slight favorites, by about five cents. Now the Sky, the favorites to win a WNBA championship for a second straight season at plus 185. The Aces at plus 220 with the second best price. We'll get back to those odds in just a moment, but first... We welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here. The second hour of the morning after on this Monday to start off a new week. Sirius XM Channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates as well. I am Ben Stevens. So a big weekend for the reigning WNBA champion, Chicago Sky. They have a two-game advantage over the Aces in the standings and about a 35-cent advantage in the odds board as well. Chicago now booked as the betting favorites plus 185 the aces there the second best number at plus 220 connecticut sits in third and they have the third best odds at plus 480 not a huge difference between seattle and washington in the standings but a three dollar difference for those odds to win a wnba championship the storm at five to one the sticks at eight to one now pay attention to those two next teams and the same price 70 to one for both the Liberty and the Wings. There is a large, large drop-off right now between the top five teams in the league and those teams all contending for the final 
three spots. And the Wings and the Liberty get underway tonight in Dallas in a game that will be back-to-back -back in this matchup, both Monday and Wednesday night, between the Wings and Liberty. Dallas booked as a three-and-a-half-point favorite to start off this final week of the regular season in the W. Right now, the Liberty sit a half game out of the playoffs. We have five teams all battling within a game of a half in each other in those standings for the last two st spots in the playoff picture because Dallas has started to separate itself a little bit. They own that sixth spot in the standings. They have won four straight, now an even 500 record at 16 and six. The Wings and Liberty only playing each other once this year. The third game of the year for Dallas back in the middle of May and the Wings won by 10 on the road against the Liberty when New York was struggling out of the gates. But a different team right now led by Sabrina Ionescu. Benita Lingy is back as well. So a bunch to pay attention to now for the Liberty in this playoff hunt for those final two spots in the WNBA. Again, the Wings, a three and a half point favorite the final week of the regular season in the W. That is where things stand in that league. But football is very, very close. A college football update slight season preview up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rail. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. Play. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Betting above the rim. To me, I think this is about LeBron trying to angle in his way to see what he wants with the Lakers, i.e. Kyrie Irving. What's going on with Kyrie? Are we getting him now? Are we waiting till the season starts? He's in silence sometimes, and I think what he's doing is he's trying to figure out what's his next step, which probably includes playing with Bronny. Betting above the rim. The Bostonian versus the book. You spend all this time, take your money, go to the window, make the bet, get the app, make the bet. You make all these bets. And then you come back because somebody asked you a question about your, oh, you mush my bet. Oh, oh, you just, you know, you just did it. You just did it to me. Oh, man. Like, are you a clown? Like, like, did, 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 take the makeup off for me first. The Bostonian versus the book. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
Sports Grid Nation, let's ride. It's been a trend all around college football as teams share out their social media videos trying to get their fan base pumped for a new college football season. And that's what we'll do here on this Monday on Sports Grid and the morning after. As we get you excited for a 2022 college football campaign under three weeks away. Three weeks from this day on a Monday morning, we'll recap week zero and what happened on the actual gridiron to start off a new season in college football did nebraska cover as a 12 and a half point favorite at aviva stadium in dublin in their big 10 opener and season opener against northwestern how did things look out on the hawaiian islands between the rainbow warriors of hawaii and vanderbilt vandy the lowest win total on the board right now on FanDuel at two and a half and the under is a minus 170 worth of juice could vandy pick up its first win of the season that's three weeks away from right now and we're less than three weeks away from a full slate of college football cfb oh so close and then when we get going in that real opening week of the college football season three weeks from thursday it will be a great long-standing rivalry in a geographical region away that still carries a strong footing in college football the backyard brawl between Pittsburgh and West Virginia and right now the Panthers booked as nearly a touchdown favorite on the FanDuel Sportsbook six and a half in favor of Pitt the reigning ACC champs with an over under that stands at 51 and a half but it's a new look Pittsburgh team Kenny Pickett the Heisman finalist from last year of course now in the NFL also for Pittsburgh but that would be the Steelers and Mark Whipple the offensive mastermind that allowed Kenny Pickett to reach his ceiling in college football is no longer the offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh he's the OC in Lincoln Nebraska under Scott Frost for the Nebraska Cornhuskers Keaton Slovis the USC transfer is now there for Pittsburgh but his former U.S. or his former Pittsburgh teammate although not really is now at USC Jordan Addison the best wide receiver in college football a season ago so a ton to get to for that backyard brawl where Pittsburgh is nearly a touchdown favorite and what will this year look like for that new look Panthers side again Pittsburgh the winners of the ACC Coastal a season ago ultimately resulting in an ACC championship game victory over Wake Forest but it's been very interesting to pick the wacky Coastal division the last decade or so in college football this is the final year of divisions in the ACC and right now Miami is the betting favorite at plus 125 second best price you'll see Pitt right there at plus 300 Pittsburgh the winners of this division last year Virginia plus 550 and North Carolina six to one with Virginia Tech rounding out the top five at eight to one now the Atlantic is owned for the most part by Clemson not last year Wake Forest won the Atlantic Division but Clemson has won six of the last seven ACC championships and has dominated that Atlantic Division so maybe we find some value in the Coastal but again historic trends here that you must know about one of the wackiest divisions in all of football the media has failed to pick the ACC Coastal winner correctly five of the last eight years including last season when the preseason poll indicated North Carolina should be the favorite to win the ACC Coastal. Our good friend, Josh Graham, was the only media member to pick Pittsburgh to win the Coastal. This year, the media has picked the the Miami Hurricanes, the favorites right now, at plus 125 to win that Coastal division. Our good friend, Josh Graham, came on the morning after a couple of weeks ago at ACC Media Days, revealing his pick this year to win the Coastal. He said it was North Carolina, plus 600. Again, the Tar Heels the fourth best price right now to win the Coastal Division, where we have not seen a repeat champion since Virginia Tech in 2011. And again, Pittsburgh won this division a year ago. Just all to keep in mind for one of the wackiest divisions in all of college football in that ACC Coastal. So the backyard brawl gets us underway on that opening Thursday night, September 1st, of the college football season. It will be a great Thursday night slate big programs across the entire country getting their seasons started including in the Big Ten a Big Ten opener in West Lafayette Penn State on the road taking on Purdue the Boilers will host the Nittany Lions where right now it's the road team Penn State 
that is the favored side, and the line working slightly in favor of Penn State. Three and a half is that number, working past that key number of three in favor of the Nittany Lions against the Boilermakers to start things out in 2022. Now, Penn State is a fascinating case study entering 2022. Two pretty bad years in Happy Valley by the relative standard of Penn State football in 2020 and in 2021. Penn State, of course, started out that weird 2020 campaign losing its first five games before winning four straight. Last year in the regular season, overall, Penn State ending at seven and six, including that bowl game for the Nittany Lions as well. But three of the four years prior to 2020, James Franklin had led Penn State to at least 11 wins. The win total this year for the Nittany Lions is at eight, and the over has the heavy juice at minus 145. I would lean over. I'm not sure I pay minus 145, but Penn State's win total earlier this offseason was a modest seven and a half for the Nittany Lions as well. And as Penn State plays in the Big Ten East, again, from that divisional perspective, you must know the handicapping. Ohio State, the heavy heavy favorites in the Big Ten East at this moment in the preseason at minus 300 should be the heavy favorites. The Buckeyes have the second best price to win a national championship. But at minus 300, Ohio State is rightfully deserving of that favored number because the Bucks have won the Big Ten East five of the eight years in this current format. And the winners of the Big Ten East have ultimately won the Big Ten championship all eight years we have had an East versus a West champion face off in Indianapolis in that Big Ten title game. The Buckeyes did not win this division last year. It was Michigan at plus 600. And might there be some value on Penn State at plus 800 if the Nittany Lions, as the odds indicate, can go over their win total of eight. That will be an absolute necessity. Finish with nine wins, maybe getting to 10 and knocking off the Buckeyes in the process that is what is expected for Penn State this year but you just saw the odds for Ohio State the Buckeyes will be by my estimation at least a double digit favorite in every game this year probably hovering around a two touchdown favorite in every single regular season contest this year all 12 of them because look at the number for the opening weekend of the year The marquee matchup of them all to get things underway on the first full Saturday, Saturday, September 3rd, now less than four weeks away, Labor Day weekend. Ohio State is now a 15 and a half point favorite for that season opener in Columbus at the Horseshoe against Notre Dame. I expect Notre Dame to be a top 10, top 15 team by the time we see that AP preseason poll in just about a week and a half. And Ohio State is going to be a 15 and a half point favorite for that season opening game. That should show you what is expected of the Buckeyes this year. Ohio State has a win total of 11. If you were to make it 11 and a half, that would be an expectation. Ohio State to go over that number would have to be unbeaten. And we haven't seen any movement in the national championship odds as of late. Alabama still booked as the favorites to win the college football playoff national title at plus 180, $1.20 ahead of Ohio State, still at 3-1, to one. Georgia plus 350, the reigning national champ- championship winners, and Clemson at plus 800, rounding out the top four. But very soon, although we haven't seen market movement here to win a national title, we will have a new market, I suspect, for the college football season. That would be the college football playoff odds. The odds for these teams that we expect to contend for those four spots in the CFP to get to that point in early December. I think those will come soon. But until we get to that, we have Tom Vecchio's Prop Perspective up next here on The Morning App.
the early line. I'm high on Josh McDaniel because if the Raiders have the good year, that means they're battling with the likes of the Chargers. They're battling with the likes of the Kansas City Chiefs. They're getting after it in the mix here, possibly for that division. And that's going to be a strong point because the thing that we see a lot, Kevin, are the younger coaches, not necessarily in age, but being with those organizations where if they have a good season, they automatically get the flip of the cap here to the top of the heap at the FanDuel Sportsbook to be coach of the year. Only on Sports Grid. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. You had to place a bet on the old versus the young who gets Joe <laughs> P's money at the quarterback spot this season. Well, my daddy always said youth and skill is no match for old age and treachery. So I think we still have to look at Tom Brady always. Uh, Tom Brady threw for more than 5,000 yards last year, boys and girls, and I know he's 45 years old. He, he lives off of your disdain for him, your telling him that he can't do something in avocados. The Sports Grid Network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Betting above the rim. Riding Cade Cunningham and Jade Nivey in the backcourt. I love Detroit smashing that 27 and a half. Sneaky value to make the playoffs at plus 1800 as well. That's why you're my guy, Shane. I mean, that's why you're my boy. Detroit basketball. Yes, They're back. They got the depth. And don't sleep on the additions of Nerland Noel and Alec Burks. Betting above the rim. It's the same way we start off every week here on the morning after on Sports Grid live on this Monday. The prop perspective for your day, for your week ahead, and maybe the season ahead in the National Football League as well with the prop man from FanDuel, Tom Vecchio, to give you all of those perspectives, a jack of all trades, the home run prop king, but who's also been diving into the NFL season long props. And he has another one to keep an eye on for you today tom thank you for joining us i hope you had a great weekend i knew that you were at the second leg of that doubleheader at city field on saturday night to witness max scherzer and his brilliance against the braves and then jacob de grom yesterday in more spectacular stuff on the mound for the mets i hope you had a great weekend and thank you for joining us here yeah thanks for having me it was great to see scherzer obviously a huge series for the mets coming away with some you know, big wins against their uh, their rivals who are right behind them in the standings. I think we are in a really interesting spot for MLB. Not just today; it's you know it's a smaller slate today, but moving yeah. into the final you know two months of the season really puts teams uh, in some pressure situations to start picking up some wins and seeing hopefully their stars perform. Certainly so, because we know what the push is now for the postseason. That playoff positioning within each league, or maybe contending for a divisional race or in the hunt. For a wild card spot because the Mets take four of five from the Braves they now have a six and a half game lead in the National League East and Jacob deGrom was brilliant yesterday five and two-thirds 12 strikeouts in only 
76 pitches. But Tom, it was just his second start of the year, his first start in front of the city field faithful in over a single year. So when you look at how dominant Jacob deGrom can be, how do you try to handicap a pitcher like that? Well, for me, initially, I would start looking at his pitch count because, uh, you know, that's where we want to see him get deeper into the games because that's where we can start to, you know, not only look at his strikeout props, but what I always have a ton of interest in would be his alternate strikeout lines where, you know, his line sitting at seven and a half. And of course, we all know he can go for that. But when you take him at nine plus or 10 plus, which is where we know he can truly get to, that's where we start getting, you know, plus 250 on some of these alternate strikeout lines. So I like to see his pitch count being elevated before we see actual results, if that makes sense. So when we yeah. bet him moving forward, we can be confident with seven and a half, but also take him at nine or 10 plus, whatever it might be. So I think he's in a really great spot. I think the Mets picked up some huge wins, as I said, extended that lead. And man, that one-two punch of Scherzer and DeGrom going to the playoffs is looking phenomenal. We saw that on full display this weekend, Saturday night into Sunday afternoon at City Field. And Tom, you mentioned it. Now in the final two months, of this Major League Baseball season, we have an idea of who are those true contenders versus maybe the pretenders across MLB. Following the MLB trade deadline, that was less than a week ago, and knowing how impactful so many series were around the bigs this weekend, how do you evaluate the World Series odds live right now in the FanDuel Sportsbook? So the World Series odds are obviously very interesting, you know, shifting on a day-to-day -day basis. The Yankees are struggling a bit right now, as we know, on a five-game losing streak. The Dodgers just continue to do their thing. The Astros are continuing to push forward. Uh, the Padres are obviously very interesting with the, you know, acquisition of Soto and Bell. They were plus 2,000 before the trade. They're now at plus 1,100. I think that the West is obviously very, very difficult. Yep. For the Padres, and not only the West, but just getting out of the NL, having to go through the Dodgers, the Braves, the Mets, whatever it might be. You know, in the in the AL, I think you could say it's more of a, a two-team race between the Yankees and the Astros. I think a lot of people are considering those to be uh, the favorites towards the ALCS matchup. So if I'm going anywhere, it, it might be the Astros at plus 430 just because their path is the easiest, where the Mets yeah. look great, but getting past the Dodgers and the Braves or the Padres in a full series – or multiple series in a row is is kind of tough to do. And at the time, we thought maybe the Dodgers had the easiest path because it was the Yankees and the Astros having to take out one another. But after what the Mets have done, adding DeGrom back to the rotation, and of course the Padres at the trade deadline, and we still await Fernando Tatis Jr. and his return to San Diego's lineup. Maybe we flip it back to the American League. And we've seen some movement in those World Series prices that we showed on your screen Within the last half an hour, the Dodgers are now a solo favorite at plus 360. The Yankees back by 20 cents to plus 380. The Strohs up slightly to plus 420. And the Mets up by 50 cents to plus 500. All four of those teams, all within a dollar and 40 cents of each other. And Tom, we mentioned it. The pinstripes moving back slightly in the World Series market because the Yankees have struggled here as of late. Five consecutive losses. The longest losing skin of the year right now for New York. The Yankees on the road this evening in the Pacific Northwest against the Seattle Mariners, booked as a slight, slight favorite to end this five-game skid. Tom, when it comes to a good baseball team trying to end their losing ways, do you try to get ahead of that? Or do you see if the losing skid comes to an end before jumping in front of that trend? I always try to get ahead of it, especially in baseball, just because there's so much natural variance where teams generally don't go on massive losing streaks or winning streaks. Even earlier in the season when the Yankees were winning you know, 9, 10, 12 games in a row, I think they did that twice where they were over 10 games. Yep. You know, I was betting against them at certain points just because teams don't often win 10-plus games, even the best teams in the league. You know, we see them going 7-3 and three in their last 10, but it's not generally seven straight wins. So I try and jump ahead. I'll take the underdog. Uh, just because it, it, you know, baseball can be a weird sport at times. And I think you know, this is one of the times where I'd be willing to go to the Yankees, and that actually has me leaning uh, for the under on Logan, Logan Gilbert's strikeout prop tonight, which is sitting at yeah. five and a half, minus 138. Uh, they just saw Gilbert last week, and they kind of touched him up a bit for six earned runs, only two strikeouts from him in 5.1 innings pitched. Gilbert's a good pitcher, but he's not necessarily a big strikeout pitcher. 
He only has a 22.7% strikeout rate on the season. He's been under that mark in three of his last six starts since the beginning of the July, uh, beginning of July. And the Yankees right now have a 21.6% strikeout rate versus righties, which is the 10th lowest in the league. We also see potentially Gilbert struggling a little bit with walks. So a pitcher struggling with walks against a team like the Yankees, who admittedly are struggling right now, but still have a right. ton of power, has me leaning towards the under 10 times out of 10. I mean, it's tough at times to jump in front of a trend when it's a bad team, but the Yankees have earned the benefit of the doubt because they are right. a very good team, and you expect a turnaround at a certain point. By the way, both baseball teams in New York, the Mets and the Yanks, the same exact record at 70 and 39 straight up. But the Yankees, of course, still the favorites in the American League. East, a nine-and-a-half game lead still over the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays playing good baseball. They own that top spot in the wild card race in the AL, but the Orioles are not out of it, Tom Vecchio. And you mentioned the final two months of this Major League Baseball season and teams trying to position themselves for that spot in the postseason. How do you think that will affect today's matchup in an American League East affair between the Orioles and the Blue Jays? Well, for me, it comes right down to the pitching, and I think that this is a very favorable matchup for the Blue Jays. Uh, I expect a lot of runs in this game in general from both sides, actually. We have some really, really nice hitting weather in Baltimore, a little bit of wind blowing out. Uh, and Jordan Lyles is on the mound for the Orioles, and this year he's allowing a 598 slugging to righties. He's allowing a 39% fly ball rate, but he's only allowing .67 home runs per nine, which is rather low considering he has a nearly 40% fly ball rate. So if we look back to not only last year for Lyles and over the course of his entire career, his uh, home runs per nine against righties is significantly higher last year and over the course of his career. But somehow he's only allowing 0.67 this year on a 40% fly ball rate. So he's due for a little bit of regression. You can't be giving up that many fly balls and that few of them ending up as home runs. So I'm turning to Vladimir Guerrero to hit a home run at plus 255 and Matt Chapman to hit a home run at plus 310. Chapman specifically has been super hot in the second half of the season coming in with a 114 WRC plus versus righties, a 221 ISO, a 43.5% hard contact rate and a 52% fly ball rate versus righties. It's much of the same for Vladdy, 144 WRC plus, 226 ISO, 39% hard contact rate. It's all the same. And then of course, Always looking to the RBI with Vladdy at plus 105 for an RBI and Chapman at plus 130 to record an eye because, again, the hit home runs, they're also getting an RBI. The Blue Jays, a minus 142 road favorite in Camden Yards today against the O's. And Tom Vecchio, remind me here. I think you won on an offensive sweep last week in that prop perspective in Major League Baseball with the Mets having a huge hitting affair and the home runs from Pete Alonso and an RBI from Starley Marte and all that we saw. Was that correct? Does my memory serve me correctly? Right, yeah. We, we hit on Pete Alonso. Uh, Marte didn't have a home run last Monday, but he did have an RBI. So we're getting all right. these at plus money. Uh, you know, you can afford to take one loss when you're going three out of four for especially some home run props that are hitting. I like that. And that's why we call him the home run prop king here on the morning after. But it doesn't just start with your daily slate in Major League Baseball. It also includes National Football League season-long props a change in the quarterback spot is what we know for sure for the Pittsburgh Steelers after Ben Roethlisberger's retirement will it be Mitchell Trubisky will it be Kenny Pickett Tom Vecchio does it matter for you in looking at the sophomore running back in his second year in the NFL Najee Harris no and a lot of that has me leaning towards the over because last season the Steelers as a team and Harris specifically himself were very very inefficient running the ball. Uh, the Steelers as a team had a 38.9% rushing success rate. We saw Harris at 38th personally among running backs uh, who had at least 100 carries, 38th in rushing success rate. We have all this inconsistency when it comes to quarterbacks. We saw them be hyper, I want to say hyper inefficient when it comes to the rushing game. And Harris still had 1,200 yards and 307 carries. And there was a specific quote from Tomlin in the offseason saying about Najee Harris that he's going to have to be the bell cow for us. And if this train is going anywhere in 2022, he's going to be a major component of that. So at 1,120 rushing yards, I'm going on the over for Najee Harris, also because number fire has him projected for 1,317 yards. So a lot going on for Harris, but it's all good news for his rushing prop. I love that look because you would think just from the volume perspective, Najee Harris will be the key component for the Steelers offense in 2022. Tom Vecchio, thank you. As always, more of the morning after is up next.
Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning after. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast the to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game Packers. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, yeah, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, oh, prime yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Betting above the rim. How can they run this back? Is beyond me. What I think this is is, hey, Kyrie's comfortable coming back. We may not want to trade Kevin Durant. To me, that sounds like y'all need to pony up a little bit more. I think Kevin Durant's more likely to stay, but I still look at that January 15 day, if things are still rocky in Brooklyn, that that's when Kevin Durant may look to be moved. Betting above the rim. The morning after. What do you expect the offense to look like, Carrington, without having Tyreek Hill this year? And what impact will that have on Patrick Mahomes? You can't do what New England did, <clears throat> excuse me, in the in the early mid 2000s where you're just putting Brady and a cast of characters together. It is a playmaker league. I think you need dynamic weapons on the outside. I don't think the Chiefs have enough to win the Super Bowl this year, but I do think they're good enough to win their division, possibly win a playoff game. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, it's come. TVG, a staple for betting on racing on television before 2017 and mobile betting, will now be renamed FanDuel Network. And the programming will focus on mainstream sports with a betting eye, looking at the positive nature of all aspects of this. There will be places for horse racing, clearly, but the channel dominated by other sports as well, though racing continues to change the meter upward as they move forward. The programming still requires significant content additions in order to make sense for 24 hours. And get this, the press release talks about the filling of the time with wagering opportunities such as pickleball, Korean football, Chinese basketball. Well, It may not be the most exciting stuff, but you can bet on it. Back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. All across the Spiz Grizz Network. Thank you for joining us here on this Monday morning to start off a new week on TMA. Also all across the Spiz Grizz Network in a variety of capacities. As his high school baseball coach might say, a guy that can do everything but none of them well, I disagree. Mark Zinno's <laughs> old high school baseball coach, I think he does it all well. Mark Zinno joining us here on the morning after on this Monday. We're going to go all around the sports landscape, Zinno. Yeah, uh, but there's Revis Island, and then there's Ben Stevens Love Zinno Island, and you're the only one on it. So uh, they're lonely places to be. I hope at least we have some good ocean views, and maybe I can develop some real estate (laughs) properties. We'll get to that at a later date. Mark Zinno in Atlanta, Georgia right now, but a native of the great state of New York and a lifelong fan of the New York Yankees. And right now, Zeno, the New York baseball teams at this portion of early August, the same exact overall record. The Mets win four of five against the Atlanta Braves in a huge five-game weekend set. They are 70 and 39 straight up right now, as are the pinstripes, but the Yankees have lost five straight. Mark, how would you describe the two differing moods around the Mets and then the Yankees? Well, the Mets are surging, and the Yankees are flaccid. Um, they are they are they are doing the exact opposite. So while 
it feels great for the Mets as they just took a four to five from their rival. The Yankees just got swept by the Cardinals. Uh, they don't look like a good baseball team right now. Uh, their bullpen is falling apart. They can't get any reliable starting pitching from anybody. And you and I, I think, talked about this a couple of weeks ago around the All-Star break that the Yankees were probably due for some regression. Uh, and part of the reason, I keep reminding everybody, part of the reason they were playing 700 baseball through the middle of June is because their worst starter ERA belonged to Garrett Cole. It was the only starter ERA that was above three. Guys like Jameson Tyone, who's throwing tonight, had an ERA of like 2.1 through the first two months of the year. That wasn't sustainable because that's not who those guys are. And the Yankees starting pitcher right now is starting to fall apart. Uh, hence why they went and made the move for Montez like they did. Uh, again, giving away a guy like Jordan Montgomery was also starting to fade a little bit. So I don't like the position for the Yankees right now. The Mets are one of the three scariest teams in baseball, and the Yankees are not. And the Yankees have lost five straight games, including against Jordan Montgomery in St. Louis on yep. Saturday night. And Frankie Montas in his debut in pinstripes yesterday got absolutely Shellac. So, Zeno, in your mind, when you look at the Yankees right now, is this a longer-term issue or just the up and downs of a long Major League Baseball season in the dog days of summer here in August? There's some of that. But in reality, you know, when you came into this season, let's go hit the rewind button in April and look at where the Yankees were. Look at all the questions that surrounded this team. The questions about the starting pitching. Where was it coming from? The reliability of the lineup, one through nine. Who was going to hit the ball and who was going to hit well? Would DJ LeMay return to form? Would Josh Donaldson be anything of value? You know, all these questions. Glaber Torres, is he going to be a guy that looked like he was going to take the league by storm like he did a couple of years ago? All those questions are still sitting here right now in the middle of August. So we had the same questions back in April. We're asking them again because, again, they're starting to play to the back of the baseball card a little more than what we thought in the beginning of the year. And I think it's fair. So they have some holes that they need to address. Aaron Judge is doing everything he can to carry this team. And don't, don't underscore the loss of Stanton in the lineup and what that's meant to them. The one-two punch of, of Judge and Stanton was really formidable from an offensive standpoint, and things have changed since he went on the I.L. So the Yankees begin a series in the Pacific Northwest tonight against another playoff contender in the Seattle Mariners. And the Yanks booked as a slight road favorite as of right now, <laughs> trying to <laughs> stop that five-game skid. So, Zeno, in your mind, how important is this series, is this new week for the pinstripes? Well, look, you're actually going to go face a team that's bona fide playoff team at this point in time and, and yeah. uh, is going after it as far as getting to the postseason with the moves that they made. So this is a real test for the Yankees who have lost five in a row. And I looked at this line last night as soon as it came out and thinking, well, how do I play this? Do I really have enough you-know-whats right now to back the Yankees? I was hoping the Yankees were going to be a dog. It was going to make it easy for me, but they were not. They, they are still uh, the favorite in this spot. There's only one way to play this game tonight, Ben, and this will be my free pick of the day, not that I – charge or anything but I, in, in jest i say that the easiest play here is seattle's over three and a half runs as a team total this is a near like i don't like the word lock but how does this not feel like it jameson tyone has been terrible he had a 504 era in the month of july his last time out against seattle he got shelled for four and two thirds and six runs he's walked nine batters over his last three starts that's 13 and a third innings and this is a guy who's got three quality starts since the beginning of june where in May he posted a 2.01 ERA. And two of those three quality starts came against the soft-hitting Royals and the non-hitting Red Sox. This is not a guy right now that you can trust. And with the Yankees' bullpen being as bad as it is as of late, if they don't get it off Tyone, Seattle should be good enough to pick up two or three runs on the back end of this game. Over three and a half, and for, very moderately priced at minus 110. I saw it last night. Go get it. Yeah. The Mariners taking the final two games of the series last week in the Bronx against these Yankees for that series victory. The Yankees, for most of this year, you know, have the best record in all yeah. of MLB. That now belongs to the LA Dodgers. Eight straight wins, 75 and 33 straight up. The favorites right now by themselves to win a World Series. And despite what the Mets are doing, still the favorites in the National League at plus 165. You said the Mets are one of the three scariest teams in all of baseball. Are the Dodgers, though, still the team to beat if you want to win a World Series? Yeah, from a public standpoint, they are. Uh, I still wouldn't want to face Houston. And I think the other scariest team is the Toronto Blue Jays. They are on, on the come right now, and they are absolutely playing the best baseball they've played all year long. But to beat the Dodgers, you're going to have to neutralize that lineup. Uh, and what you're going to need to be able to do is do what the Padres couldn't do last night. And that's do that thing called uh, get a hit. Um 
So Troy Anderson was fantastic last night. Let's look at the Mets, though, as the one team that can do it because they certainly have the starting pitching. But there was an interesting, interesting stat that came out of the Braves series because a lot of Braves fans talked about how, well, the Mets got lucky and they weren't hitting the ball all that well. And, you know, if you're into the, the nerdery sort of sabermetrics, BABIP, you know, batting average on balls in play, the Mets have an over 300 batting average on, on balls in play. It's the sixth highest in Major League Baseball, which means they hit them where they ain't. When they put the bat on the ball, it goes where they ain't three out of ten times, and that's a good number to have. And you don't have to hit the ball out of the ballpark against the Dodgers. Play station to station baseball. The Mets are the one team built to do that, and, yeah, I think they absolutely can take out the Dodgers. It's the best Mets team we've seen in easily 15 years. This is better than this, the World Series team that, that lost to the Royals. This is a much better team than and that team. I would agree, and you have DeGrom and Scherzer right now going back-to-back back, like we saw this weekend. And the Mets heading into that trade deadline, everybody said – the Amazons need to acquire a bat. They did. Darren Ruff, Daniel Vogel back. But the Mets have still have the third best offense in all of the bigs all year long and the best offense in Major League Baseball since returning from the All-Star break. In some movement as we speak, now plus 240, 10 cents off that price. Still the second best number, but less than 80 cents behind the Dodgers in the hunt for a National League pennant. So, Zeno, I get from your statements here that you believe the Mets are the best team built to take down the Dodgers in the National League. Do you still think the Padres or the Braves or maybe the Redbirds, the Cardinals have won seven straight, have the ability to rival the Mets and the Dodgers in that National League pennant hunt? The, the challenge for all those teams is the road you have to go through to get there. Like, for example, just take the Braves right now. Like, the consolation prize of finishing second in the NL East with the best wild card record is a three game series against the Padres, a five game series against the Dodgers, then a seven game series against the Mets. That's before you get to the World Series, right? So that, that road is incredibly tough. Like, the NL Central winner, whether it's Milwaukee or St. Louis, may end up with the easier road here because if they, once they get out of their three game series, if somehow they can topple the Mets, They'll get a full seven games against the Dodgers in the NLCS to be able to do something. And if you're able to take out the Mets, there's no reason to believe that you couldn't take out the Dodgers. So it's a rough road, to say the least. Uh, I think the right. Dodgers are, are better built for a short series than a long series. And that's the real challenge uh, for a team is to be able to beat them in a shorter series. But in those, those tight games, the Dodgers have the advantage. Zeno, there was a time about – a couple of weeks ago before the Major League Baseball trade deadline where we expressed on this show that the path maybe through the American League was tougher because the Yankees would most likely play the Astros and whoever won that would probably represent that side in the World Series. But the Dodgers' path through the National League before the return of DeGrom and before the Padres got so active at the trade deadline to get Juan Soto, the Dodgers had an easier path now it feels yeah. like that's flipped on its head. The American League seems a little bit more up in the air where the Dodgers and the Padres and the Braves and the Mets all will be gunning against one another. That's where we stand. Less than two months left in this Major League Baseball regular season. But as we go across the sports world right now with Mark Zeno, we're getting ready for a new year in football. First, NFL talk, Zeno. There was some injury concern around Matthew Stafford this offseason as the Rams begin their Super Bowl championship defense in 2022. Elbow issues that plagued him last year. He had an offseason shot to try to repair that elbow issue, but has not really thrown all that much throughout training camp at this point and did not throw it all throughout spring workouts for the Rams. Is that concerning enough that you think maybe the title defense for the Rams, at least from an NFC side of things, doesn't run through Los Angeles? No. I mean, look, Stafford is definitively one of the toughest quarterbacks in the league and has played through a lot. Uh, and he's got enough weapons uh, where he doesn't have to ball, throw the ball down the field 27 times a game. They can dink and dunk the hell out of you without any hesitation, given what Cooper Cup can do uh, and the rest yeah. of this offense is. So... I don't have many concerns about it until it makes him miss games. And think about it in, in reality. You know, if Matt Stafford is out for a, a considerable length of time, and it's John Wofford, is that his name? Wolford, Wofford, the, the AAF guy who, uh, who, who was the backup there? Uh, is he any worse than Jared Goff is? How much worse is he than Jared Goff? And I want to say that to illustrate that the Rams are still a playoff team with Jared Goff. So even if Matt Stafford misses time this year, I think Wofford is enough to be able to give them a float. Now, are they going to get over their win total? I don't know. I mean, that's a whole different conversation. But if they get to the postseason and Matt Stafford starting again, they'll be the favorites to win the Super Bowl again.
Matthew Stafford reportedly looked really good at training camp practice this weekend, but it follows some concerning statements from Sean McVay late last week that these issues in the elbow area are abnormal for a quarterback, much more like yeah. we'd see with a pitcher in Major League Baseball. We'll monitor those odds as we go through these preseason months. But Zeno, we're less than three weeks away from the start of a new college football season. The national championship odds have not really changed. Do you feel any differently heading into 2022 in college football? No, I mean, I'm going to really focus hard on Clemson um, and, mm -hmm. and look at them. You know, I, I was looking at their win total last night at 10 and a half and really dissecting their schedule. There is a little bit of uneasy feeling about how DJU is going to be able to reinvigorate this offense and get it back on track. I want to say I don't have that many concerns. Uh, they have Cade Klubnik waiting in the wings if things go wrong. Now, this isn't Trevor Lawrence taking over for Kelly Bryant, but Klubnik is one of the top prospects in the country when he came out of high school. So their defense is what turns me on to them thinking they're going to win 12 games. They are going to shut teams down like right. nobody's business. It's going to be embarrassing. Clemson's defense this year is going to be Georgia's defense last year. So I right. really want to focus in on them at 8-1. to one. They get to the college football playoff. Defense tends to win out, and uh, you're getting good value at 8-1 to one for the Tigers. And the reason, as, as you saw there on that board, that Georgia was in the national championship game against Alabama a season ago was because of that dog's defense. The third best price for Georgia, Alabama booked as the favorites. Mark Zinno going all around the sports landscape. I hope your high school baseball coach is watching because you killed today, my friend. Thank you, sir. More the morning after. The final segment of it up next here on The Grip. Trevor Lawrence, to coast. Uh, let's face it, he was awful in his rookie year. Awful. But, you know, they blamed it all on Urban Meyer. And I got to tell you, uh, I don't. I blame it on him. Like, he's the one playing in the game. Now, you can say the coach is terrible all you want. Good for you. I mean, the guy was a mess. And I'm sure he'll be better. They've already crowned him the best second-year guy. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Betting above the rim. As much as we think it's got to be about LeBron, it's got to be even more about AD. He's got to carry yep. the load. He's got to have that season where he takes himself inside as a small ball five and attack people, and he's got to shoot it better than I think 17%. He will look for a huge bounce back year out of Anthony Davis what a chance to win the MVP. Betting above the rim. The early line. But can we all please just admit they should have kept him in in Minnesota? Like, is everybody okay now to admit that it was a ridiculous thing that he was taken out in that baseball game? To put a perfect game under the belt would have been magical. And again, Donnie, this is not the first time he has been injured this season. Can everybody just admit they should have let Kershaw go? for the perfect game only on sports grid the morning after yo we know how competitive the afc is going to be the nfc feels like there might be some other areas for value where do you see that on the board entering 2022 i do believe that the vikings have a lot of offensive pieces here that can be really scary and that division's very weak uh even the packers are a little weaker year over year but the defense is very good but when you take Devonte adams out of a team it's still something to consider. The Sports Grid Network.
Closing out our two hours together here, live on a Monday morning on the morning after on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, Channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here to start off your new week. Football is very, very close. We'll have a full slate of preseason games to end out this week. Multiple games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the National Football League. Under three weeks away from college football. The final week of the regular season in the W as the WNBA playoff push intensifies. And you could make a similar argument for the final two months of the Major League Baseball regular season. A huge weekend for the New York Mets, winning four of five games against the Atlanta Braves. But is today's series opener against the Cincinnati Reds a letdown spot for the Amazons? We'll discuss that before we say farewell and before we say goodbye. It's time for a Major League Baseball best bet. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. The odds would indicate that the New York Mets should up their win streak to four games. In fact, the Mets have won 12 of their last 14 as it stands right now for that six and a half game lead in the National League East. They're a minus 320 favorite live right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. So a couple of different ways I'm approaching this game. The Mets team total is five and a half. It's a number that New York's offense has gone over in seven of their last nine games, and they scored at least five runs, averaging 6.2 runs per game in all five games of the weekend set against the Atlanta Braves. They're also facing Justin Dunn today, a pitcher the Mets organization knows very well. He was selected 19th overall by the New York Mets a couple of years ago in the Major League Baseball draft. So I'm leaning to the over for the Amazons of their team total at five and a half because New York also has the highest over percentage at home this year, 60% of their games hitting in over. So that will be the best bet. Mets over five and a half for a team total because why not? The morning after each and every weekday, it starts at 9 a.m. Eastern time. I'm Ben Stevens and we'll talk tomorrow.